says it is Claire actually scary. I think they had the nickname in mind from mm. right from my audition. We'd had trials for our university football team, and I hit a shot from the edge of the box. And I just caught it so sweet. And she put her arm out and her arm just snapped. And I was horrified. It was like this poor girl. And everyone just took the mick out of me so much for it. And then they got me this T-shirt that said, do some damage on it. So that's where it came from. Yeah. Nostalgia is a powerful thing. It can evoke positive emotions, help with mood enhancement, And in some cases, it can even be a tool for managing stress. It's a form of escapism. Look at the amount of bands that are now touring the anniversary of some iconic album. And as always, the public response to those is absolutely huge. Total Wipeout first aired in 2009 on BBC One. That's now 15 years from when it first aired. And such was the popularity of it, it lasted for six whole seasons. So just like an iconic album contains people's favourite songs, an iconic game show like Total Wipeout is going to feature people's favourite contestants. So, how popular is Scary Clear? Well, two weeks ago, I asked, I put it out on YouTube, if there was any fan questions for Clear. The response, is safe to say, has been off the charts. So much so that unlike other interviews, we basically can fill an entire interview just with fan questions. That is the power of nostalgia. And uh, that also seems to be the drawing power of uh, Scary Claire. Uh, Claire, I, I feel bad calling you that name. <laughs> just for, how are you doing anyway? It's, it's, it's so yeah, nice. Yeah, good. Thanks, John. Uh, yeah, I just can't... Nice to speak to you. Well, I'm trying to think now. The last time we spoke face to face, was it the night of the champ show when we all met up to, because we went down Brighton, didn't we? I I met you, uh, you, Dan, had a a viewing party together, didn't you? Yeah, so so me and, yeah, me and Dan had a a viewing party. I think you had a group of people together. We did, we did too. I met up with uh, Rachel, Andy, Les, Kelly. Katie and me. I think we started out initially, and then later on, we we joined you down Brighton. Later on, that's oh, that was it. Yeah, yeah that, that, that was, was the one. Yeah, up, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I think a, a lot of people wanted to watch it. My first show, I wanted to watch sort of with my group of family yeah. and friends, and, mm. and the second one, <laughs> the second one, I, I knew what happened, and I, and I and I was less keen to watch it with other people that I yeah. knew. So I thought, oh, Dan's really keen to watch it, and obviously Dan was really excited because he'd yeah. done so well. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was it was nice. Went down to to see yeah. it with him, and then yeah, and then I'll be you guys yeah. as well. Yeah, because I think with me, um, I think we started out in because you were down Brighton, weren't you, for Dan? And I think yeah. my, I started out that evening in Kent to watch the you know the actual airing of the show, and we stayed around in the pub, and then. What was it? I think it was Katie, Kelly and myself were the ones who could make it down. And uh, we joined up with you later. But I'm trying to think. I don't think we've, although we've like spoke on Facebook a couple of times since, I don't think we've actually spoken face to face since then, have we? It's not. No, I I went down. I went down to Bristol with Katie and a few others for the balloon festival thing. Oh, okay. Make it. I did. No, I didn't. I didn't make that. No, there was a few of us there. But no, yeah, I don't think we've yeah. I don't think we've seen each other face to face. Well, yeah. we're not quite face to face now. It's, it's close, isn't close it? It's, it's close <laughs> enough. Yeah. Funny enough, I actually bump into Kate uh, a few times now because uh, I don't live too far away from her currently. Uh, well, probably about 15, 20 miles away. So uh, yeah, sometimes if I've been out in Bristol, we've we've bumped into each other a couple of times. But we even did a we did a Ninja Warrior competition last summer. <laughs> we both oh, took yeah. part in it. That that was fun. So it's just uh, just a chance for us to uh, play some obstacles again. But yeah. Yeah, time time flies when you're having uh, when you're having fun, but uh, yeah, it's just it's so. I mean, I initially when I first asked you, I had quite a few questions I wanted to ask you, especially about series five, and then I thought, okay, let's see what questions other people have, and then well, the list came in, and I'm just like, I don't need to ask any more questions. I think they've covered it all. It's. Uh, <laughs> Well, that's it's really nice. I, I, it's yeah. funny because when you asked me to do the interview, I was kind of yeah. like, I'm not sure anyone will really be interested yeah. or want to see that. I, it's it's been really nice actually because it was so long ago. I thought I'll okay, rewatch the episode so I know yeah. I'll at least remember what I'm talking yeah. about. And and watching them back, I was like, gee, I was in some quite sort of key moments in memorable yeah. moments in in the oh, series. So I 
yeah. it kind of makes sense that there's some interest and obviously being on it three times I guess gives well, me the, the three different shows to talk about so. exactly I know and do you know there's I know on the um Oh, what do you call it on the community tab on YouTube when I put the questions? I know one guy, Josh, he made a list of the ones who've been on it. There's one guy who's done it four times, he's the only one, but there's only about I think five or six of you that you know got three shows out of it. I mean, that's that's good going because oh, God, I, I could have played that all the time, you know, I just I just loved it. So the fact that you got to do an extra show, I was so so pleased for you on, on that one, but uh, yeah, no, very lucky. Yeah, uh, so what I'll do, if I go to, I'll go to uh, YouTube now, I'm going to, it's probably best with the majority of questions, that I'll just ask them in the order of as people posted them. However, the most recent one, uh, the last question posted, it's better I start with that one and you will understand why. So this is from, uh, Sa what's this? Yeah, Sa Samuel Hagos. And it says, it is clear, actually scary. I mean, we did it's probably better for you to answer john than me well, <laughs> it was like we were i don't know about you but when we were out there we were all trying to guess what sort of names are they going to give us and like with you the last thing we thought of the what do they call this scary for she's lovely <laughs> it's just like i mean I think, go on to be honest i think they had the nickname in mind from mm. right from my audition mm. um i a friend of mine had given me, I don't know if you remember my first show, I wore a t-shirt that said do some damage on it. Oh, right. And, uh, okay, yeah. A, a friend of mine had given me that t-shirt hmm. um, as a joke because I, I'm a really shy person. Right. And I'm definitely not a kind of in your face, yeah. you know, pushy type, scary yeah. person, I don't think. And I yeah. don't think other people No, you're do. not. No, no. But, um, I, I play football and I had, we'd had trials for our university football team. And a girl came to trial in goal mm. and I was playing at the time and obviously you play along, you try them out. Mm. And I hit a shot from the edge of the box and I just caught it so sweet. And she put her arm out and her arm just snapped. Oh. And I was horrified. It was like oh. this poor girl that we'd never met before. And I'd just broken her arm. Like not, I didn't do anything yeah. wrong, yeah. but I was, and I, I was so horrified and everyone just, took the mick out of me so much for it and then they got me this t-shirt that said right. do some damage on it so that's where it came and, from yeah oh, so that's where it came from and um and then i when i when i went to the audition i thought mm. it's quite a good it's yeah. quite a good t-shirt to wear they're looking yeah. for something a bit yeah. interesting and and, and I, I genuinely think that t-shirt is probably the reason that i ended up on the show because they wanted some some fit people to go on it and i think they they found a character that they thought they could build around that it was so <laughs> i i noticed that even with my audition they wanted a mixture of either some yeah you know, some fit people or some really entertaining people and sometimes people had both but you could see they were just looking at there were certain things that would stand out and i think it all makes sense now if you wore that yeah. t-shirt it was it was like ricky for instance i mean he wore a t-shirt that says as seen on tv you know he wore that as a t-shirt so caught their attention straight away um yeah it's just what you do i think that's it because I, I was i was far from a natural in front of the cameras and I yeah. hated the cameras and I, yeah. that was the worst bit for me yeah and going to that audition I just kind of thought I just so want to go on this show yeah. not because it's a tv show but yeah. because I really wanted to do that obstacle course they... but I couldn't imagine for a minute they were going to pick me but as I say I, I think they saw that t-shirt and they thought oh we can we can have some fun with this yeah. and we can we can almost make it a thing do you know what I remember one of the producers uh Emma I think was her name Emma Taylor blonde blonde hair um, mm -hmm. and I always remember she said it all happens in the edit that's why when they would have us with the the wipeout backdrop and they say look at the camera look left look right and all that and then all those little things are asking to do and then they can make something of it yeah uh, although I think they struggled to make something of mine because I look so uncomfortable in all of them <laughs> <laughs> oh, they put like their hands on that little turntable do you remember yeah. you had to stand and do like actions and yeah. shout things and like I, now say it louder and now say it quite now say it yeah. like you're scared now say it like you're yeah. angry it's like so they could almost make whatever story they wanted out of it i know um, well do you know what with me i got dizzy as it because the uh i think for the champ show the motor i don't know if you had it as well but the the motor you know for that rotating platform by the time i got onto it it broke and so they had to oh, manually yeah they were spinning it by hand weren't it, they? They were, yeah, yeah. And I, I genuinely was getting dizzy while doing that, and I lost my way and I fell over. So that thing that they put in the edit, that was for real. 
<laughs> it's probably a good thing I didn't do dizzy dummies actually, because <laughs> if I struggled with that, because uh, yeah, I'll, I'll ask you about that later with dizzy dummies, because that looked vile. That uh, that game, it just um, I don't know how you can handle forty seconds of spinning and then trying to run straight. It's just <laughs> yeah. I think I'd still feel sick to this day if, if I'd actually yeah. played that game. So I'm so so glad I had Dreadmill in my in my first show because I could I avoided it completely. So all right, let's let's get through these uh, questions. Well, I mean, this is interesting. Not so much a question, but this is from I've got to read these uh, names from uh, Rex R E C K Z. I think I say say his name. And well, I mean, this sums up the uh, you know the fan response. It goes yes, finally, Scary Clay was one of my favourites. Uh, but the way she got out in the series two finale, oh, that dizzy dummies was brutal. I mean, yeah, it's it's so true. I mean, you almost had us in tears, uh, you know, at the side watching. I mean, what was it like from from your side? I uh, yeah, it, so I think what you saw playing out there was was just shock. I I I think mm. I because to me, when I landed on that platform, obviously James and Chris would yeah gone they were yeah. machines they were gonna yeah. they were gone they told us before the start of that game mm -hmm. that that was like the hardest game that they had and that right. in series one they'd had to stop it for some reason because they couldn't complete it so i oh, think we okay. were all expecting it to be really tough and go on for right. ages yeah so james and chris just went across it like it wasn't even there mm -hmm. and then the three of us all got on it and we kind of realized actually this is I, I don't know if they'd done something different because all the other Dizzy Dummy obstacles were absolutely smothered in grease, but That's that it. one yeah. wasn't. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know if they changed that or they and they almost made it not too easy, but like we all just got across it first time. So and none of us were expecting that, I don't think, based right. on the way that they built it up. And I landed so I think Dan landed first, but his legs were still in the water. Then I landed on yeah. the platform face down, and yeah. Jack landed literally on top of me oh that's right the audio, so, it was like a pilot on the yeah on the map. So, yeah. so yeah so dan landed then i landed next to him then jack mm. on top of me like fractions of a second yeah. apart yeah but he was on top of me so obviously i couldn't get up i didn't know that the rule was that you had to get up anyway yeah and then we kind of realized i think that all three of us were there and, and in that split second it's like well what what do i have to do here so yeah. i just kind of scampered to the end thinking well mm. surely getting off the platform must yeah. be the thing that's going to decide this so then there was quite a long i don't know if you remember there was quite a long yeah. delay because i don't think they were quite clear on who it was out and what the rules were and what it was going to be because i yeah and then as we were called over they were like right we're ready a man is going to kind of announce mm. what it is in my head it was either jack's going to be out because he was the last one to land yeah or dan's going to be out because he was the last one to get off the platform yeah. yeah and his legs were kind of still in the water at the point yeah. the other two of us were on the platform right so when you so then amanda's doing a little kind of spiel thing where she's yeah. saying right so this is the and she said you have to be on your feet to finish and i think you just see my face of yeah like, oh my god i did not get on my feet <laughs> like i yeah. did not cross my mind for one minute to get onto my feet um and then i think it just you know the, the whole experience is exhausting isn't it and you're yeah. so brained this i i still feel embarrassed that i cried about it because what a pathetic thing to cry about but it's, oh, we were it, as well. It hit me in that moment of yeah. like, oh, and I just, and then I was worried that I looked like a really bad loser, which nope. <laughs> it was. It didn't look not like that anything. No, I didn't begrudge the boys at all. That they didn't do anything no. wrong. None of us did anything wrong. It was just, you know, yeah. one of those things. But, but yeah, I just, I don't think any of us knew the rules, and it was that, uh, just I, what it was. Maybe I didn't read the rules fully. I mean, I did try and go through everything. Uh, I don't remember seeing anything about. That you have to be on your feet to complete it. I but maybe it must have been there, and I I, I missed it. But I tell you now, when you all you know landed on the uh the thing because we were all chatting amongst ourselves watching it. Because I mean, for anyone's wondering, I mean that game was over in thirty seconds. I mean it was just yeah. you all cleared it first attempt. You you know James and Chris gone, three of you landed, and I remember vividly watching Jack because he was on top of you. It seemed like Jack got up first you were scrambling to the finish and dan basically just stood up and and i think even dan's body language he thought oh i'm out you know that's how it looked and we all said the same thing I thought, oh right dan's out and so then when it goes to amanda's thing like what how, how does that work <laughs> they're only thinking like what are the rules doing it just didn't yeah 
didn't seem yeah, to they, they did they did give us a rule book and yeah. they gave it to us on the minibus i think it was on the way from, from the airport to the hotel they gave us the right. rules and you i think you oh. had to sign to say you'd read them as well i have a oh, feeling right, um, okay. but i'm not entirely sure that any of us fully read them having just no. got off an 18 hour flight or whatever it's, it was no exactly and they did say to us they said watch out they said on the rules for the qualifier there is an added piece of paper that's very crucial of course that's because they were telling us about the tightrope uh to to look out for um but yeah i i remember scanning through them on my first show i probably didn't read them as fully for the champ show more than likely yeah but i don't i don't think they ever expected that rule to really be needed no. is the thing because no. the other dizzy dummies i was i was in the closest were not i mean the finishes were not close <laughs> people yeah. they, they edit it down to a short time but they do yeah that that first one I I think I finished so we we had like pipe bridge it was called I think in the first one where oh, um yeah. it was really greasy yeah and I just went with the same attitude that I went of everything just run at it fast and hope yeah. for the best basically yeah. yeah momentum and I think I got across yeah I think I got across on my third go yeah and they showed all three of my goes I think mm. the others because it was there was so much grease on it and I think they were maybe slightly more tentative because they were male and worried about dropping in on, onto it. Um, right. <laughs> they, <laughs> um, they were going for 20, 25 minutes. And then they, in the end, they had to stop it and wipe wow. off some of the grease. Yeah. And it just, even then, it still wasn't close. And I just think people were finishing so kind of far apart in time. I don't yeah. think they had, because when we walked yeah. around the qualifier, they, they, you didn't get to have a go on anything before, no. but they did at least show you the course That's before, right. didn't they? Mm, and they kind of said, so for this obstacle, you have to at least attempt to do this. And yeah. if you get this far, you can go on to the next one. And if you don't get this far, yeah. you have to go back and try and start again so that people couldn't just dive straight into the water or mud That's and it. just yeah. ignore all the obstacles entirely. So they kind of walked you around it and said, these are the rules, essentially. Mm. But for Dizzy Dummies, they that was kind of, they didn't really do that so no. it was... i suppose yeah <laughs> do you know what there was this um i came across it recently that uh like these panel shows that review um you know tv shows of the past week there was this one i think on channel four you have been watching and they covered total wipeout it, it was our series that they covered and i think it was ben armstrong was it ben miller you know armstrong and miller do you remember those comedians and mm -hmm. he just referred to it he, he said i never thought there could be so many different variations of how you can fall in the water but it's i suppose when they're invented the show they probably they tried to cover every base possible but there's always going to be a few curveballs that come up and i guess well that's what happened wouldn't it so mm -hmm. yeah so yeah okay right let's go to okay this is the start of where people were asking more than one question um for anyone that's wondering yeah amongst the questions there's one guy coming up and he's got 10 questions for you so we'll, we'll try and go through these as best as we can <laughs> yeah okay so this one is from uh the x master and let's see my questions one what made you want to apply for the show okay yeah let's go with that one first series one i just yeah. i watched series one and i mm. saw that obstacle course and i just thought that looks so much fun yeah and for me a lot of people love the cameras really were excited to be on a tv show mm. i was the opposite i had no desire to be on the tv <laughs> yeah. show but i wanted to do the obstacle yes yeah. and i'm now glad i'm obviously glad that they were filming it because it means you can watch it back because whenever you yeah. do something like that it's so fun to be able to think you think you know yeah. what happened in that moment but to be able yeah. to watch it back is great but um but yeah i was just i just so wanted to do it and yeah. It was I was I was so shy at the time. It was a real big step for me to yeah. get the courage to do. And I always I always kind of found that sport could give me the courage to do mm. things that I wouldn't otherwise do. Like yeah. put myself in a group of strangers for that length of time was just like what what. But yeah, I just yeah. I just thought there's no other opportunity. There's nothing else like this that you can get this opportunity to do a course yeah. like that. Do you, do you so, think your competition history, you know, with the football and everything, did that help you cope with? Because it is sort of a comp well, it is a competition. I mean, did that help on that side of things, just having a little bit of sporting experience and stuff to to compete on the show? Did that side come into it? Or? No, I don't. Well, yeah, my kind of natural drive to want to do the best that I can, I think yeah. it did. Yeah. I, in well, I don't know how you felt, but to me, it didn't massively feel like a competition. Everyone was so friendly, and so yeah. you wanted to get through to the next round. And you wanted to do the best you could. And obviously, some of them were like the sweeper. Everyone was up there at the same time. And you were trying to be. Yeah. But not 
not in the same sort of direct way as trying to beat another football yeah, team. Do you know what I mean? It was more you went out to do the best that you could in you that moment. You just want to get to the next round, don't you? And you really wanted to get to the next round, yeah. yeah, yeah so it, it didn't feel like it was like, oh, right, I really need to beat John in this one. Yeah, it, it, no, it didn't no, it's feel true. Like yeah. that at any point. It was like, yeah. how fast can I do it for me? Yeah. And um, so that was, that was yeah, that was quite different, I think. Yeah. From Actually, in between his questions, i got to ask you whether you had the, the same. When you run the qualifier, when you get to the end, do you sort of have an idea in your mind of, Oh, I wonder how fast that was. Do you ever, because with me, it felt slower. When I found out my time at the end, I thought I was on the course for a lot longer. Did you have the same feeling? The the champions show, the first show, I don't think I had any real awareness of how I'd done. I knew that I had basically fallen off every obstacle, right. but I'd fallen off it all quite quickly. Yeah. And, and that seems to be quite a good, you yeah. know, try everything, get as far as you can, throw That's yourself it. at stuff. Yeah. But you know, if you fall off, just get to the next bit quickly. Yeah. And I kind of knew I'd done quite well in the first one, but I had no awareness of how I'd done compared to other people. Yeah. In my, in the champions show, I, I thought I was out because yeah. I knew I had fallen off. Well, the, the tightrope and the pain that that caused me, I thought that had slowed me down quite a lot, yeah. the mud as well. And I knew I'd kind of fallen off everything and I didn't feel like I'd done it that fast and I also yeah. knew I was in a champions show so I was against yeah. other really fast yeah. people so for that one when they read out my name in the that I'd gone through to the next round I was so relieved because I did you not know think what? That... because I think you and I were net were basically there was like two seconds between us and I I, I think I fell off in the same spots as you the tightrope the sucker punch all the mud pits I went in and you landed on the podium at the end didn't you the, that was the only thing you yeah. same as me it's, I fell off everything else and at that point, I, I was just convinced. I thought, oh, I'm out. And so as they're reading all the names out and it's going further and further down, I thought, yeah, I'm definitely out. And then, like, my name comes up, what? <laughs> so yeah, it was the same. Just, yeah. same. Yeah. Exactly the same. As yeah. I say, I, I kind of, in the first show, because they had that mixture of people who were there more for the experience and people who were yeah. there because they were fit and actually potentially said, yeah. could win it, you had a little bit more confidence that you might be okay yeah but with that champions show i was no, i was wasn't. sure i was out after that qualifier of course but, we were the first champ show as well I and mean, they hadn't done that before so it was a bit of a step into the unknown wasn't it i mean it certainly felt yeah, yeah. certainly felt like it for me right okay second question that he was asking if there was a chance for people who appeared on the the show but lost would you apply for it and how good do you think you do i think he's referring to if they rebooted it you know if they bring it back because it's probably going to get a reboot at some point. Probably once Gladiators finishes its run, I reckon it'll come back. Would you give it another go? Oh, I'd, I would love to. I yeah. can't imagine. I mean, I think I've I've had my fair share of goes, so I can't imagine they'd ever let me back. But you know, it was such a great experience. Yeah. I, yeah, no, no hesitation. Would I? Would I do it again? Yeah. The opportunity. Did, yeah. did you ever wish that they? You know, they've started to make Ninja Warrior you know, parks around the country. So you can watch that show and play the obstacles. Do you wish they did something like that for Wipeout? It'd be so much fun if we could actually practice the balls and all that sort of stuff. It would be... Yeah, I think I think the uh, the safety side of things would be... Uh, yeah. They did it in Argentina, but apparently they had to adhere to British health and safety. That's right, yeah. That's what I was told. Questionable, yeah. but yeah, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it'd be so low capacity wouldn't it because you you have to go one at a time and you have yeah. to be spread oh, yeah. out and you, you have to have someone them. watching every person that's, because there's yeah. so much potential for that's, that's a good point yeah damaging yourself i just yeah. don't think they do it but yeah i would be yeah. i would say that was when when i saw that first series i was mm. just like oh i have to do this and then i was like surely they'll make it so that you can go and just do it not on the telly yeah and then i was like no, the oh, only no. opportunity you're ever going to get to do yeah. this is to be on the TV. yeah it's fun so you must have seen because i think it was in that first series it was around episode five i think they put the the application up at the end if you want to be on the show uh, i yeah. happened to be watching it with dad at the time and he went Oh, he said you could give that a go, couldn't you? And I got a text message from a mate saying, "Hey, John, I've just seen this show. You, <laughs> you might want to try it." So it was probably the same episode we were watching. More than yeah, like, then it just almost certainly, yeah, yeah, almost went from there. But yeah, I, I don't know how the people on the first series knew how to apply or what it was going to be, but um, but yeah. I, do you know what? The last person I spoke to, it's been a year since I've asked any you know contestant from the show. Ben was in the first series, and I think he said he was just looking around on. I remember, I think he was just looking around on BBC to see what shows were 
uh, around and he found it that way and i think they were advised because wipeout had just started in america and so they were just given a couple of clips to look at to get an idea okay. of what the u.s show looked like and but they went into it blind effectively yeah so at least we again we only had a few clips from well we had series one to look at and that was it so um and youtube was very much in its early days at the time so uh remember that right okay that's uh third question do you still <laughs> do you still think it was a good idea to come on the or to go on the show oh definitely i know as i say it did, this sounds dramatic but it genuinely changed my kind of confidence level around yeah. being in groups of people yeah. i didn't know mainly because of how kind and nice everyone well, yeah. Uh, oh, hang on. Almost. Yeah, like, we just instantly yeah. bonded as a group in all the shows. And yeah. I, you know, I, um, and yeah, I think it just gave me the confidence. You know what? Don't be such a wimp. People are nice. Yeah. <laughs> just go well, out there and enjoy what you want to enjoy. I, I don't know if you had the same. I mean, you know, we, well, I mean, you did, you did the third show as well. But when we meet at the airport, you do not know the other people at all. And then you're dunked on a flight for 16 hours. And yet we all got on so well. That's what I couldn't get over was just how how friendly it was, you know, with everyone. So it was and I think the fact that some of us are still in touch to this day kind of says about, you know, you know, the impact it's made that we, you know, we've made connections with people that we never would have otherwise. I mean, it's such a random thing. It's, to be it's, it's such a yeah, such a random shared experience and something and, that unless yeah. you've done it you, you can never really understand the no. intensity of what it was like out there <laughs> yeah. um and the, the brilliance of it it was, yeah. it was so yeah uh, yeah best best idea i've ever had i think yeah <laughs> uh, uh, the stress levels stand at the top of the qualifier is like nothing i've ever experienced <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. right okay. I, well i had i had to stand at the top of that qualifier for such a long time because oh, they did not approve of how pathetically i shouted my shout out right so the, i think the fine i think that the final one you saw was about take 10 or something so i've been i've been yeah. standing up there with that water going oh, of over course the water's over soaking you isn't it yeah like jumping around thinking right they're like no do it do, do it more angry do it louder yeah i haven't done it right do it louder like, oh my god yeah. <laughs> so that's what came out at the end yeah <laughs> do you know what it's um it's funny you say that because i know for the champ show I could not get my lines right whatsoever at the top because they were trying to, I couldn't think of what to say. So they were making suggestions for me of what to say. And then I just kept tripping over myself and I just couldn't get it right whatsoever. And it was, yeah, I mean, I don't know, probably three, four takes. And I think at that point they said, oh, whatever. <laughs> we probably won't. Also, at that point, I was like, they're not even going to let me run this course because they're not going <laughs> to approve of how well I've done my shot. They're just going to cut yeah. me out entirely. That's it, yeah. Oh, I know. That, that's, it's funny. When you watch a, a show like that, it's those little details that you don't realise until you're involved in it. And I'm mm -hmm. sure people who do Gladiators and Ninja Warrior, they'll, they'll tell you the same thing. It's always those little you know, bits that you never see on TV um, that you know that just uh, make a big difference right let's see um this is now uh yellow uh yellow squid so it'd be interesting to hear stories about series five looking forward to it also would like to uh would also love to know if they were told about the hidden. oh yeah the hidden motivator on series five because it was I think from series three or series four, they had this big mallet overhead that was swing down and wacky, but it was blended into the floor. Was that mentioned? I don't, I don't remember it being mentioned. I don't think it was, but right. I think we all kind of knew that it was likely that there was going to yeah. be something hidden there yeah. because of the fact that, that they had that mallet in the previous yeah. series and they yeah. wanted to do that. It's like the, the first obstacle of the qualifier in, that I did in series five mm. was called something like the, topple stairs or the stairs of doom or something there's some sort of stairs and oh, when we were walking around mm -hmm. it, they were basically like this is a new obstacle it's some stairs we're telling you no more about that oh, so straight God. away i was like right well <laughs> something weird's gonna happen with those stairs it's right. not gonna be some stairs that you can yeah. just walk down so i just decided i'm just gonna jump over that yeah <laughs> entirely and try and grab the rope and it meant oh, that's right because it was the, the if you run and jump because didn't you do that and the then try and bronco stairs i think it was called ah, right okay but, but they didn't tell us it was called bucking bronco ah, stairs right. obviously because that yeah. would have made it quite clear what was going to happen but yeah, yeah basically as soon as you stepped on it it started like bouncing up and down it, like yeah. bounced people down on the bums down into the water yeah. basically right um so yeah so no they, i'm pretty sure they didn't tell us about the hidden motivator oh, okay. but i'm pretty sure we all had an idea that yeah. it was that it was there um 
because I think that came in because certainly in those first couple of series, sometimes people were so determined to, to clear the balls. They were standing up there for ages, just hesitating and hesitating. And they just wanted to uh, no, get going. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, you were tired by the time you got there as well, especially if you'd yeah. fallen in that mud. Oh, I know. So that's you can crazy. imagine people standing there just wanting to take a breath. Yeah. And it's, it's obviously funnier for the TV audience if you are if you are tired when you try it and then you just splat into the water. So, Actually, so yeah, I think they wanted to speed it up a I bit. I just thought the, the sucker punch in series five, am I right? There was like spray paint that is squirting out from the from the wall as well. There wasn't, mm-hmm. it wasn't yeah. just the mud to worry about. There was. I'm trying, did you get? Did you get hit with any of the spray paint at all? Or I, if I did, I didn't notice it. It okay. was. Yeah. It was very watery. Right. It wasn't. Yeah. Um, um, the mud, the mud was much more watery in in my series five episode than it was in the other two. I don't know if that's common across. Do you know what? The series I, I've got a feeling they made the mud much worse for series two. And it was horrendous for us. I mean, the really amount thick, of trainers yeah. that got lost was insane. And it looked more watery as the years, you know, as the series went by. I mean, that was my Yeah, experience. it well, it, it certainly, mm. my experience from series two was that it was much thicker and harder to get out of. When, right. when I landed in it in series five, it was like, oh, this is almost like a yeah. swimming pool, this. I can <laughs> right, actually yeah. move in it. That's quite <laughs> Luxury, nice. Luxury, yeah. I, I can't. I can't comment on whether it was like it, I don't because I don't I don't think they'd had just loads of rain or anything. Mm. I think it was yeah. almost a deliberate decision because a few people they, in my first episode on series two, yeah, Caroline got stuck in the mud and oh that's right yeah didn't come out. I mean obviously yeah. she's alive. She did come out, but she yeah. didn't. Yeah. Like she had they had to stop. She didn't finish the course. Actually, she I I met up with uh, Caroline. Um, she. 2015, uh, I was competing at the British Rowing Champs down at the, in fact, you know, the Olympic Velodrome, uh, you know, in mm-hmm. London. Uh, she came, when I said on uh, Facebook I was going to be competing down there, she goes, oh, I'll come down because she lives in Reading, I think. She's quite close by. Okay. So that was, although I'd spoken to her on Facebook, I actually met her for the first time in 2015. So <laughs> okay. oh, she's great. She's uh, yeah. got a lot of time for her. Because I understand her and Aaron, I think they watched the, uh, they watched your original show together or something. something. Okay. Something about that. Yeah, sorry, you you saying that just just reminded me. Yeah. Um, right, let's see. So that is yellow. Uh, yeah. Okay, next one, and this is from uh, Tyler. Is this the start? Oh, just two questions from him. Right. Out of all of the obstacles cleared it in series two and five, which ones were the easiest and the hardest you did, and why? So we'll start with that one. Oh, wow. Easiest. That's- yeah. So I think it, it depends if you mean easiest in terms of to actually complete or like yeah. physically right. less draining. Because um the the easiest at the end of my qualifier on the first one, we had something called oh, that was the zip wire of doom. That's where the doom thing came on. And you basically just got on a zip wire and then yeah. There was two poles. That's right. Yeah, the two pillars. Yeah, and they kind of made it look like you had to do something clever yeah. to go round it and then hit into a net. But if you literally just hung on to the thing and yeah. went, it took you to the yeah. net. So <laughs> right. I think okay. that was that was easy, almost unless you tried to do something clever with it and then right. it, then yeah. it dropped in the water. So that one I think was accidentally easy. Yeah. Um, and then in my series five qualifier, there was another zip wire one, mm-hmm. but through a shape sort of, I think it was a shape oh, that sort was of that round, twisted um, round yeah that spinning round yeah thing and it had the shapes or... cut in it yeah and I think in that series they they used that quite a lot of times but different ways to try and get through it and okay. in my episode it was it was a zip wire but the, the zip wire had like a solid hole thing on it so it didn't move you know when you go on a zip wire you're expected yeah. to go it yeah. kind of you you went and then it kind of lagged a little bit while oh. you were trying to move it didn't oh. move in a predictable way so yeah to try and get yourself then actually through the hole i, I think was possibly impossible because uh, because you can't uh, work I mean, out the timing you if can't it's not work out natural, the timing it's not an yeah because yeah. it didn't move in that kind of normal zip wire yeah. type way right um so I, th- I think that one that one was hard to complete but it wasn't tiring or right uh, the the tightrope in the champ show was the one that absolutely killed me okay, in terms yeah, of Disney. I'm pretty sure that a lot of people watching it do not know the amount of injuries and rope burns that came out of that. I mean, do you want to expand a little bit on what happened with, with you on the tightrope? Yeah, so I so I took my normal approach that I took throughout of just go it as fast as you can. Yeah. You'll probably fall off, yeah. but at least you will have got further along the course quickly. Yeah. 
And I landed on that first one in between my legs and it just burned all up the inside of my leg and made it, I, I, well, I couldn't wear jeans for four weeks afterwards because it was so swollen and so raw. Yeah. And you just, I, I think you see my face in it, like, and then yeah. you just think, oh my God, this is like the first obstacle. Yeah. <laughs> Get off this. Yeah. There's another tightrope to go yet. And then I've yeah. got to do the rest of it. But yeah. luckily adrenaline just kicks in and you do it. But yeah. Or oh, the the pain of that and the the slight regret of going at it so fast. But, you know, yeah. if I hadn't have got it at that speed, I, put, I might not have got through and I might not have yeah. got to experience the rest of what I've got to yeah, experience. Exactly. In the show. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so yeah, I, I think... I think that one was hard. I think um I think the the dreadmill, not dreadmill, the terror grow round. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was tough. Yeah. Um and and the reason that was tough is it, I, I think that one felt a bit unfair to me right. because whilst on Dizzy Dummies, you had to go, you had to do two different runs yeah. on it. Right. If you came first, second, third, on mm. if you came like high up in the first one, you got more rest. Yeah. Because you'd finished the obstacle, and then the ones who came in like the one who came in last was obviously out, but the one who came in second last had been on the course the longest, so they were at a slight disadvantage in the next one right. because they because they were a bit more tired, uh, and you don't get much rest between them. But that kind of feels fair because you get an advantage for doing well in the previous round. Right. On the terror go round. You had to do it three times. And the first time we did it, it was me and Jade. Well, there were six of us on there. Four mm. fell off quite quickly. And it was right. me and Jade on there. And we were running on that thing for, I think it was about 25 minutes. And you're, you're running on it. You're jumping over this thing. You're having suitcases thrown at your head. And I had this quite annoying and, habit. And I it's on an angle over. as well. It's, it's very Yeah, on an angle as well. I kept falling over and therefore having to sprint to get, yeah. like, pick myself to sprint again. I was, and then Jade absolutely smashed it, yeah. won that first round. Yeah. I was dead after that. Like, my legs just couldn't move. Yeah. And then, obviously, everyone else had had 20 minutes rest, having only run on it for five minutes. Right. I had to get straight back on for the second round. I just, well, and I, I think the second round, I fell off pretty pretty quick. Right. Um, and then the third round, I just had nothing left in the third yeah. round. And to me, it felt kind of unfair that because I'd done the, well in the mm. first round, it put me at a massive disadvantage yeah. for the second and third round. No, 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 I see what um, you mean. So it was just, it just felt, yeah, that I, I think that one was the hardest to take in terms of defeat, if you yeah. know what I mean. Even yeah. though Jay hundred percent won it fair and square, yeah, I think I could have got through that had I had I almost deliberately fell in straight away on the first one. I probably could have I won un- the second one. I understand it because you expended so much energy in the first one. And like you said, everyone else is fresh going into that round two and you were mm. just absolutely hanging from it because you've just done a you just, Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. whereas like with Jade, for instance, she had a route straight to the final from that. She didn't have to do Yeah, it. so she yeah. didn't have to do yeah. number two and three, yeah. which is fair enough because yeah. she'd qualified and she'd gone through. Yeah. But it was yeah, it just I think that one physically exhausting wise was was the toughest yeah. for me um, yeah no, that's understandable i mean okay let me just see uh oh yeah yeah which one's the easiest and hardest uh that was right second question he had what was your reaction when you got called up to compete on series two so yeah the first time you got called up series i think i think it was just shock surprise yeah. as i say i i, I knew i knew i was quite fit and quite sporty yeah. and that I'd done well in the sort of obstacle course bit yeah. of it. I but I that. just did not think I'd performed well in front of the camera. And I thought having watched series one, so much of it was about the character. Mm. And as we've already kind of talked about, a lot yeah. of that character is created post edit. Yes, <laughs> it is. Yes. And you don't realise that when yeah. you're uh, yeah when you're doing it. You kind of think of the confidence of the people yeah. out there doing this shouting and you don't yeah. realise that they might have tried it ten times before they got to that. Yeah. yeah. Um so yeah it's just really really happy obviously yeah but also quite nervous that suddenly yeah. i'm gonna to fly to argentina now with that's that, it, yeah, with people i've never met and do this actually thing. i've I've just thought of something else and i know it's not in the the questions so you had from your first episode in series two to the champ show you had about were you okay were you the first episode to be filmed in series because they aired them in a different order yeah. you show one weren't you 
yeah we were show one so and, and at that point no girl had won it because obviously rachel won it and yeah her show was aired before ours but ours was yeah. actually filmed first so yeah. at that point there was still this big thing about all oh, the girls never won it can you try yeah. and win it and it's but yeah, right. so yeah, we were the first one to be. So we had quite a big gap before we went yeah. back for the champions. So. so the old thing with, you know, that you can tell a couple of mates, but they generally didn't want it sort of, you know, widely known how you got on. You had about a month. So you would have had about three to four weeks gap between you flying out there first and then us all meeting again for the champ show. If you were having to keep things quiet from certain people, how did you find it having to sneak out of the UK again for a week without anyone knowing that you're gone? Was that was that well, something? I think, it? yeah, kind of. I, I think because I think it was the first champion show, wasn't it? I don't yeah, think it was the first ever champion show on, on series no, one. No, so I don't think I had to reveal that it was a champions show that I was oh, going back okay. for. It was almost just like, a, oh, they want me to go back oh, um, okay. without having to to right. say why. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, I mean, obviously you have to you have yeah. to tell work. I was on a, I I hadn't long finished uni and I'd started work and I was yeah. on a graduate scheme where you were rotated around different departments. Right. And I um was due to be starting in in a new department in a new office with people right. I'd never met. I was due to be starting on the week we filmed the champion show, so I had to ring up this new boss and be like, um, you know, I'm supposed to be starting with you on this day. Uh, I'm not going to now. It's going to be a yeah. week late. Is that right? <laughs> So it was Ooh. a bit of an awkward conversation to have. But, of course, there was the other awkward one well with, when the filming got delayed for the champ show and everyone had to exactly. say, oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So then it was like, oh, I've, this this work is going to hate me before I've even started. But um, <laughs> yeah. luckily it worked out all right. Oh, that, that, they, were all quite, they were all quite excited by the show, yeah. so it was fine. Yeah. Oh, that's the main thing. Right, let me just check. That's Tyler's comments. Yeah, your reaction getting called season two. Right, is this... <laughs> here we go right do you remember we noticed that uh Sa sam in ali uh 10 questions okay we're gonna <laughs> this will be fun right we'll have we're to on them, are we? uh what course did claire find harder double um double cross or the sweeper crush oh that's a good point for that round two game so you did the sweeper twice and then double cross which which was the tougher one in your view so i think oh. I just I loved the sweeper so much. Yeah. It, it was and it was so perfect for me. I I loved mm. the whole because I I liked I, I was in I was fine with heights. I yeah. and although it was really wobbly when you first got <laughs> it was I don't think anyone, around. Yeah. I don't think anyone was fine with it when they first got put on the platform no. and realized like how am I going to jump on this wobbly thing? But, That's it. Um the jumping through was I because I was quite good at jumping. I was quite naturally springy. Yeah. Yeah. For me it was that one was so much fun. I, yeah, it was it was hard, but for me it was mainly fun. Yeah, and the double cross, I think this is going to sound really arrogant, but I was surprised how bad at it I was. Right. Um, I just didn't seem to be able to get the timing quite. Oh, okay. Right oh, there. because it all had to line. You you could only exit on. You had the different arrows, didn't you? Different coloured ones. It wouldn't. You had to be on a yeah. certain coloured one to get to the other side. Yeah. So there was four spinning. Yeah. Arm things. Apple, and yeah. you had to, you could, there was three of them were green and one of them was red, and you could right. only go in on a green one and out on a red one. Ah, oh, right. Um, okay. So you you could you had to go into the middle. Yeah. And then on a green one, and then with the things swinging round, and then go out again on the um on the red one, which there was right. only one off. Yeah. And so if you were in the middle, you kind of had to wait until the point at which it lined up, mm. which you had to judge, obviously, because it was all yeah. moving. And if there was someone else in the middle with you or multiple people in the middle mm. with you, it was almost luck then whether or not you were the one that was in the right place to yeah to be there when it was yeah, at its yeah. timing. Um, unless you started like pushing people out of the way and stuff, which, I don't, which we, weren't, yeah. we weren't about to do that. Yeah, I, I think the other thing with double crosses, two people in my episode got injured. On that. Oh, Mark did. And I think... He? Yeah, Mark so, was and, from and, my show, my original show. Yeah, and so yeah. he he was back there because he got yeah. injured in that's his right. first show. Yeah, and he, that's why he got that that chance to go back again. But unfortunately, yeah. he got injured again. But I think the thing with the thing with sweeper is you're standing, you you can see the arm coming, and you can yeah. see it jumping. And if it hits you, it hits you from the front, and it yeah. kind of takes your legs away and flips you. Yeah, and yeah, that probably hurts a little bit, but it's not moving your body in a kind of... Of course, of yeah, you, you, you never way. experienced that, did you? Well, I didn't, <laughs> you were too good yeah, on no. sweeper. <laughs> yeah, no. But on um, on double cross, you're running 
one way mm. looking at the center and the arms coming at you from the side right so if it gets you it kind of hits your legs mm. sideways nice. yeah which is obviously a bit dodgy on your knee and your ankles and stuff and because you're not looking directly at it as it's coming you're focusing on where yeah. you're going mm. to me it feels like double cross was more injury risk than than the right yeah. um and and there, as i said there was two people that did get injured on it on in yeah. my show and i don't know how common that was across the rest of the series yeah. but yeah i don't know just sweet i, I just love the sweepers i know it's, it was it's such an like it's so iconic i think it's the best one to watch do you know but... what i'm uh, uh, as much as you know the running joke amongst all of us that the sweeper haunts me forever with that pile up I, however, at the same time, I am so glad I got to play that game because uh, we never had it in series after that, did we? So if we'd not gotten on series two, we would never experienced it. Yeah, and no, yeah, and it, that, was, oh, it was so much fun. That was special. That that really was. So okay, right. Uh, what course is fine? Hard double cross. Right. Second question: Does Claire prefer? Oh, uh, did you prefer Terraga round or Dizzy Dummies uh, for the third rounds? Well, Ooh. as I say, Terraga. As I was saying, Terra Go Round haunts me a little bit because I felt like I could have got through that if I yeah. hadn't yeah. done almost so well in that first round. And it felt a little bit unfair in that sense. I think it was quite a good game to watch, though. And it quite it looked good, yeah. Dizzy Dummies, Dizzy Dummies, talking of nostalgia at the beginning, Dizzy Dummies feels more of a wipeout yeah. nostalgic game. Yeah. Um, but which one was more fun to do? I I hated the spinning of Dizzy Dummies. I yeah. I, well, you, you probably notice in in both of my episodes, hmm. I just stood in it for I couldn't even undo my seatbelt thing the first. Oh really? Time okay. I was, I was yeah. so dizzy. Yeah. I just stood in it for a minute, and I think in the commentary, Richard Hammond said something like, "Oh, that's a clever tactic. Wait, let them all fall in and then go." It's like I literally. Oh. <laughs> Cannot take a step forward or coordinate yeah. myself well enough yeah. to undo my seatbelt. There was no tactic in that. Right. It was like, I just need to stand here for a minute, mm. let myself recover before I go and try and yeah. do it. Um, so, yeah, so Dizzy Dummies, as horrendous was, as it was, I have fonder memories of Dizzy Dummies. Right, was, yeah. Uh, do you know what? It was one of those games that worried me, and I was thought, if I ever got that far, I don't know how I'd do. When I found out I didn't have it for my show, it's all like... Oh. <laughs> I, I don't I don't do spinning very well. Uh right. Third question. Did anything behind the scenes happen after the third round of Terraga round concluded where uh John won because there was a big a big skip uh, there was a big skip in the final edit. I don't know. Was it hard to tell who won that round? Okay, the, yeah, was it hard to tell who won that final bit initially? Because I think you were holding on to the arm, wasn't it? It, it caught you. John fell in. He hit the water first, and then you went in. Was there? Did you I know think... what happened? Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't remember. Well, actually, I think what happened with that it was, it was almost the opposite of mm. um, the dizzy dummies incident. Yeah. In that, when I got hit by the sweeper and taken off, I was out in my in my own head. I yeah. was out. I didn't even yeah. realize he'd fallen. Right. And then when it got called over as like. Oh well, there's some. Who's who's it going to be? We don't know who it's going to be. I was like, yeah. well, what? Why would you not know who it's going to be? I got yeah. pulled off yeah. first. Yeah. Um, and and I think it was I, I think it was just a case of I went over the edge of the platform before he did. Right. Um, I see. Therefore, because otherwise you could have just hung on to it Hell and on, yeah. carried on round forever, yeah. and that would have been a much easier way of doing it. Yeah. So um, so yeah, I it it kind of looks close in the in the show and, yeah. I, and i guess actually it was close and in a way yeah. that makes me feel unlucky because he did fall just yeah, as no, i was you, falling and so right, if i'd yeah. managed to go over it one more time then i would yeah. have you know got through to the wipeout zone and, and a fourth episode yeah exactly but, yeah but in that moment it, as i say with the dizzy dummies one in my head i was through and i was shocked when they said i was out yeah whereas in that one i was in my head 100 percent out and when they said there was any chance that there was any con controversy about that that i was yeah. like no i'm out of that and yeah <laughs> do you know what you're, you're describing something similar with me because with the champ show pilot when i hit the water i looked up and then saw you were stood up there i saw everyone else go down like skittles and i was working out and i think no i think i'm out and then when i got out of the water they said uh john can you get ready for dizzy dummies we're going to check the replay we think you're in i'm like i think i came six is it five or six no i'm pretty sure i'm out and then they came over and said oh by the way no no we made a mistake you're out Thanks. Oh, thanks for that. <laughs> just, just build up my hopes and slap me down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Um, 
Okay, so Tara go around right. Question four. What made Claire want to participate in Total Wipeout in the first place? And oh, I think we've covered that already. Um, yeah, oh yeah, and one, why yeah. Uh, why she also came back for series five? Yeah, how did series five come about? Did they just contact you? To I just got a phone. Call. I, I was in a supermarket and I just hmm. got a phone call and they were like, "Oh, it's I can't remember who it was, but it was someone who had been out there with us on the show." Right. Yeah, um, one of the producers and and just said, "Oh, we're we're doing." we're doing a thing called um, Last Chance Saloon. We're bringing back contestants from, from the mm. last show. And as soon as we came up with this idea, we thought we've, we've got to bring you back because of that Disney yeah. Monies thing. Do you oh, want wow. to come back? And I was yeah. just like, yeah. Wow. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And luckily I was, I was fit. I wasn't injured or anything. And I yeah. was able to, able to square with work and go again. And it was just, yeah. yeah. I mean, it how was much, completely how much notice? Move. Did they give you much notice for that? Was it like two weeks, three weeks or? I genuinely can't remember. I don't think it was that short notice. Right. I think because it was it was a series that they were planning for. It wasn't like a... uh, and of course they didn't it wasn't like they were auditioning people to cast for that series. They'd already selected all of you anyway and already decided who was going to fill up that. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I I can't honestly remember, but I don't yeah. it wasn't like the champ show where it was yeah. like you come back and you've got to tell them you're going yeah. again in a couple of weeks. It was I had enough notice that it yes. was. Of course, the other one that I think not many people are aware of is that your series was actually, the, um, it was classed as series five, but yours was filmed after, uh, yours was filmed first in the summer of 2011, I think it was. And then the Winter Wipeout was filmed later that season and they quickly rushed through the edit for Winter Wipeout. So you had to wait over a year, didn't you, for your episode to air? Oh, it did go on a for ages, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you had a yeah, long. I'd, I'd completely forgotten that, but yeah, yeah. it was a long time. Originally, I think your show was going to be the fifth series to air. Of course, the wipeout, winter wipeout, was technically series six, and it was just because they they filmed it in like the October November, and they quickly decided to put that edit out for Christmas, and so everyone waiting for series five, you were made to wait until about September the following year. It was, uh, yeah, it was. I wanted. Yeah. Yeah, I'd forgotten that, but you're right. Yeah. It was it was ages. Um, yeah. Obviously, because I because I was lucky and I'd done it before. It wasn't my first show. It was yeah. it was slightly less of a a big deal. The wait, I guess. But yeah. then they did, you know, they that um, Freddie and Paddy's takeover thing. Oh, they did one of my episodes for that as well. Mm. So um, they contacted you for that, I guess. Yeah. I don't think they did contact oh. me. They, well, we got a thing saying actually, yeah, we did get a thing saying mm. that just to let you know they're considering doing yeah your show. We because I had, I had the does. same as well, and I uh, initially it started out. I got a random message on Instagram from an account that said Richard Wipeout or something something like that, and I thought, oh, this is a spam account, and I saw it. And I thought, hang on a minute, if they've asked me, so I messaged Anthony and I gave him a message, and he said, yeah, I've had the same one and then i think we asked ricky so we were trying to piece together what was going on we started to realize they were contacted certainly once from series two and yeah they asked me a few questions because they were considering it but mine didn't get aired afterward it was mostly series four and then yours and rachel show so the, you know, the, those are the only ones but uh yeah that was yeah how did that feel seeing all that again uh, you know because it was yeah it was strange because it was so it was so long ago and for so long it it was kind of the defining thing that people would introduce me as like yeah. I'd be going to some important work conference and it'd be yeah. like, Oh, here's, here's Claire. Nothing about her credentials as an engineer or anything. Yeah. He went on wipeout. And, and it, it, that yeah. was great. Yeah. I loved that so much. It yeah. was like, because then everyone was like, Whoa, that's so cool. And, and it was just starting to kind of die down again. Mm. And then suddenly it comes up again and everyone. And it all, it all happened. Yeah. Yeah. Something weird happened during the lockdowns. Because everyone suddenly started flooding YouTube, Netflix and all that, viewing figures for a lot of things just went vertical. I mean, um, you know, Jack's uh, episode of Wipeout, one of the channels, because a few channels have got the episodes still up there, the viewing figures on his show went up to about 42 million or something like that. I'd watched on, it, it went crazy. So I think that was... Uh, um, because it was during that time that someone then popped up on my YouTube channel because I never posted anything about Wipeout, and then they said, "Oh, hang on, you're you're one of the ones who did Wipeout," and then they started asking other questions. That's why these interviews came about because 
suddenly, whilst all the lockdowns were going on, I was getting spammed with, well, I say spammed, you know what I mean, just uh, just loads of questions mm-hmm. asked. And then I thought, oh, they're going to want to hear from other people, hence me, you know, asking ones bit by bit. But my goodness, but yeah, the response for you is just be off the charts. Um, so, uh, well, it shows, I mean, I don't know how long we've been recording for so far, but we've still got quite a few questions to go through. So it shows how, how popular this has been. But um, yeah, sorry, sorry if I keep getting sidetracked. This is what no, happens no, when I nice. ha- haven't really got a script. Nice, We're just nice to remember it. It is, yeah. Well, it's kind of funny. Sometimes I try and write a few notes for these uh, for these interviews, just a, a few little pointers. But the sheer amount of questions, because you can see, I'm just reading them all out. I mean, I just realised I thought that is the structure of this interview. So all I have to do is just go through them. We talk about it, and that's going to fill up an entire sort of thing so that's why this one is slightly different it literally is you answering fan questions so it's uh yeah this is you doing fan service <laughs> i think that's that's what we can call it <laughs> so let me see what question do we go to tara go around we covered that one or may claire want to participate yeah and also why she came up for series five we've covered that right F- question five is there anything that claire regrets the most about total wipeout any regrets oh. Yeah, a hundred percent. The trampolines in my first wipeout zone. Oh yeah. When when we did the little walk round that I was talking about before, where they mm. say this is the slide, you have to go down it on the ring, yeah. you, then you swim to here, and then you go up the yeah. barrels or whatever. I just remember looking at the trampolines, and the guy who was walking us around going, "Some people think it's a good idea to go bounce, bounce on those, but yeah. most people over bounce it. So we recommend that you yeah. land on it and stay on it." Right. And in my head, I was like, I think I I would rather do bounce, bounce on it. Yeah. But when, so then what happened was I landed on the first one, then went to jump to the second one and underbounced it. And if I'd got up onto that, I would have, I would have won that yeah. show. But I underbounced it because in my head, I had mm. him saying, oh, everyone overbounces it. <laughs> Yeah. And if I and I still think if well, firstly, if I just bounce a tiny bit more and managed to grip on, I would have mm. won it. But then the next bit. I think oh, I'd, at least if I'd gone bounce, bounce, I would have fallen off quickly rather yeah. than slowly. Um, it, yeah. So that is my biggest thing when I watch it. It's like, why didn't I do that differently? But then, yeah. you know, ev- everything happens for a reason. And if if that if I'd won that show, I don't think they would have invited me back, regardless of what happened in the Champions Show. I don't think they would have invited me back. No, that's true because um, yeah, because that episode was all about people who hadn't won previously, wasn't it, to to come back? So yeah, yeah. So so you know, it's. That is the thing that I look at and I think, oh, I wish I'd done that differently. Yeah. Um, and I regret crying in the, in the Dizzy Dummies episode, but I, yeah. I, I had no control over that. The trampoline one, I made the decision to bounce and stop. Yeah. Um, and then when I went up to do the trampolines again in that show, mm. I bounced on the trampoline. I, I did the same technique again, but right. my foot went down the side of the trampoline. Oh, yeah. And, it, got, you know, it got stuck, didn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, those like hook. That's those it. Those things. springy sort of Metric things. Shirts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they make you wear like you, you're wearing like wetsuit boot things that yeah. they give you. Yeah. And the hook of the hook in the side of the trampoline hooked mm. in through my wetsuit boot. Oh no. And and it was just stuck and it was down underneath because it slipped yeah. under like a little cover bit. Yeah. So I couldn't like get my hands in to undo it. And I was just pulling, trying to rip the wetsuit <sighs> boot through this thing. Yeah. And I was completely, I mean, to be honest. That made little difference because I was already past Darren's time by that point right. anyway. Yeah. But it was just like, I can't believe I'm not going to finish this wipeout zone because my yeah. foot is stuck in a trampoline. But yeah. luckily I did manage to get it free. So it's um but yeah. You were the last to run as well, weren't you? Um yeah. of course, because I understand the way they do it is whoever wins the previous round, uh, that effectively becomes the the top seed, is it? I mean, you were basically the top seed yeah. going through. So yeah, they kind yeah. of they kind of seed you for the who they that's think, it uh, yeah they, which the meant the you person have to wait. who thinks most likely to win is going to be the last yeah and then then you have the longer waiting time in the tent and all that sort of stuff yeah that's that's stressful yeah I, I yeah like big time because yeah. you can kind of hear a bit yeah. of what's going on can't you yeah. and like the, the Actually, sounds and it, it's, it takes quite a long time as well because to yeah. climb up to the top takes quite a long time it's a big tower for me for me it was ages as well because aaron was afraid of heights yeah and he went at, he was second right and he he was stood up there they he almost didn't do it because he kept like wow. going up and then being like no i can't do it and going down again and then going yeah. up so yeah so i was i was sat in that tent on my own for ages yeah. thinking what the hell is <laughs> like <Yeah>. this doesn't <laughs> take this long what yeah. is happening right um but yeah i don't i mean it didn't have any effect on the final result but 
Um, yeah. But yeah, the thing I regret most is the trampolines in the first yeah. show, definitely. That's understandable. I suppose it leads into the whole thing of the fact that we got, uh, even to this day, people are surprised when they hear that we had no practice at the events. What you see was our first attempt. And that sort of socks them. They assume, that, like gladiators, people get two days of training you know, for that, to practice all the uh, the games. And yeah, yeah, yeah. we had nothing. So. That was the point, wasn't it? It's not funny yeah. if people are good at it. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. so they, they want you to not know what it's going to feel like. Or, <laughs> exactly. You know, but it's more fun for us if we can have practice at it and have more goes. So, it's yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. Right. Where are we on this? Anything? Uh, question five. Question six. What does Claire think uh, about the Dreadmill? And if that was played, does she think she would have made it through? Oh, yeah, because you, know, you didn't get, you didn't play Dreadmill, did you? No, because I did Dizzy Dummies twice, and then yeah. obviously the Terror Grow round was. Yeah. Oh no, it was the. Oh, I don't know which. Yeah, the Terror Grow round. Yeah, and then, yeah, and so yeah, no, I uh, I didn't do it. Um, but yeah, I, I really don't know. Is yeah. it the draw for that when they draw you against another person? Is that just a random draw? I can't. Um. Yeah. Is right. It, okay. What, what? No. 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 What? What happened? It was um, whoever won the sweeper, their name wasn't put into a hat, and then the other five uh the names would all get put into like a jiffy bag and so like in my show chris um uh, semi-pro chris he was the one who won the sweeper and he won the, the qualifier so his name didn't go up all of our names were written on a piece of paper and put in so chris had to pull a name out of the hat and it just so happened he pulled my name out and i remember joking okay. he said oh no in my That's luck not- it'll be me that's not and, really an advantage though is it to be able to randomly pull out yeah name? it was a complete so yeah so what happened and the funny thing is me and chris were effectively the top two seeds going we were the fastest two well that's top. yeah which and, feels unfair yeah uh, so yeah it wasn't seeded it was a complete random draw so what happened was that because chris pulled my name out of the hat then that was us two taken care of because it was just four of them left they went to the next highest ranked person on the suite, which was Paul in my show. So they took his name out of the hat and then he had three names to pull out and he just pulled in, pulled out Benny's name. That was it, which mm-hmm. then sorted out the final draw. Yeah, and that's yeah. How we yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, that one feels... Uh, like, well, imagine in the Champions show if, mm-hmm. if Chris and um, James had pulled each other in the Dreadmill. Yeah. I know we didn't do the Dreadmill. That's probably no. why they didn't do the Dreadmill. No. But that would have felt like a real injustice if one I of them had to go I actually asked them would they have considered uh dreadmill because for me <laughs> just me being me because coming six in, a, in an event that you needed the top five because had it been dreadmill i would have been through you would have gone but through yeah. said, although we could have had more people play in the dreadmill they felt dizzy damage was the fairest way because everyone gets to play because you're literally dreadmill you're pitched against one person and that's your yeah. route to the final so yeah, 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 i yeah. can understand yeah. so that's it. yeah so yeah I, I don't know i'm 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 not a runner I'm, right I give me a football and I'll chase it all day yeah. and I'll chase it quite yeah. quickly, but I'm not a runner, but I, I do have, I, I would have given it a good go and yeah. maybe I would have done well. I don't, it, it, was, depends who I was what, against. it was, it was a fun one to play. Cause what happened as you run through, cause the belts uh, starts out and then it, once they get it up to speed, once the klaxon goes, they're on normal speed. Once you lift the first crash mat and go through, then they turn the treadmill up for you and it goes faster. Once you get to the second door and you complete it, then they turn it up again. And that's how they mm-hmm. would uh, that's how they would do it. But they said to us, there's a three minute time limit on that game. Um, and they warned us. They said, look, it is going to be going so fast if you get through the final door, just be warned and all that. And it was although with me, I had a feeling that Chris had fallen off. I just wanted to see what it was like at the end. And I was like yeah, determined. I thought, I, I thought I want to finish this on my feet. So I was determined to stay, not die for the finish. I thought, no, I've got, I got to go for it. But oh, I, I loved that game. I really did. Yeah. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. But, um, yeah, in a strange way, I'm, oh, God, I would have been awful at Dizzy Dummies. I would have, I'd still be dizzy to this day. You know, I'd still have <laughs> vertigo issues. Right. Uh, question seven. Uh, this question goes to both of you. Oh, I'm just wondering in the champ show, what? Ha- oh, here we go. Yeah, this is we can expand on this. What happened to the other contestants that got eliminated in the qualifier? Because from the crusher onwards, we don't see them at all in the spectator bench. Uh, and all the other episodes, including the champ show and in series three and four, we get to see all the contestants, you know, basically what happened. Well, okay, you know what happens. Do you want to say? Yeah, do you want to yeah. So after the first day of filming, um, there was a break in on the site, and uh, all the cameras equipment got stolen, mm-hmm. um, which meant that we couldn't go back the second day and record. Um, so they had to delay it. Was it was it a day or two days? I can't. Remember. Um, okay, so we filmed the qualifier on the Tuesday, right. and on the Wednesday we sat around the hotel all day. 
Well, and, you did. I went to Uruguay with Dan. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. That was <laughs> later on. Uh, mind you, wasn't that after we'd moved hotels? I think that was later on. Uh, oh, we did move hotels, didn't we? That's yeah, we had to move hotels because yeah. we got upgraded to a it much was two days, wasn't one. it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I remember, we did not know what was going on on that day because it was pouring with rain. So we thought it was a rain delay, or at least I mm. did. And then later on in the day, rumours started to emerge that, oh, it could be that we're not filming today now. And then the production turned up and said, right, uh, all the cameras have been stolen. Originally, had we filmed all the events that day, we were all due to fly home the following day. And all they decided was that those who didn't make the sweeper were going to fly home as per normal. The rest yeah. of us had to stay out. And yeah. there was a lot of panic phone calls, wasn't there? Trying to get extra time. Yeah, off yeah. Trying to get time off work. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So the people, so that's yeah. why they weren't there for the, when mm. we were filming it, because they'd already flown home yeah. on the plane that we should have all been on. Yeah. But we, we all stayed for that, that extra. Yeah. It was another couple of days, wasn't it? It, it was. Yeah. Because we, well, we didn't film until the Friday. Uh, we got transferred on the Thursday morning. We checked out of that original hotel. We got moved to that other one across town. And then it was the following day we were on set again uh, to film the rest yeah. of it. Of course, the other thing with our sweeper, because we didn't have an audience, it was absolute silence up there. Do you remember? Yeah. It was just you could hear a pin drop. And Amanda just... would make an occasional whoop, wouldn't she, to That's try it, and yeah. get some atmosphere? But yeah, it was. It I was would just silent, hear the. Yeah. Of course, they edit in crowd cheering. Uh, you know, they just yeah. dubbed it all in afterwards. But it was that was yeah. weird. Playing that in silence was. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mind you, I, I loved that game. I really did. It was. Yeah. It was good. Fun. It was great. It, it was a shame for the people that had to go home though, because they didn't then get the full. It, experience but do you but... know what it, it it did change the dynamic a little bit because we didn't get a chance to because uh, like for me i had to change roommates because i was with chris you know karate chris uh chris castro he was my roommate initially of course then when we all got moved uh, we had to change again and so yeah i had the room on my own in the oh, end you had the room obviously... on your own after it. yeah because yeah because dad... because katie and um rachel were together that's right and they they only put girls with girls and boys with that's boys it. and i was I was with um, Kelly, and then right. obviously because Kelly had been el eliminated, oh, of course, there yeah. was no one else for me to share with because there's oh, three girls. Right. There, so. Yeah, because let's see, it was yeah, because it was you, Rachel, and Katie were the the three girls left, wouldn't it? So yeah, yeah, because you had let's see, uh, I know Dan shared with me we uh, we were roommates. I think was it James. Was it James and Jack that were roommates, perhaps? I can't remember. I really can't remember. Chris and no, Ricky. I, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. I yeah. should have asked them. But yeah. But yeah, that was, a, that was a crazy experience, that whole yeah. thing. And yeah, on, on one of the days, yeah, me and Dan just decided, well, we're here. We may as well make the must And we That's went it, off yeah. on ferry to Uruguay for a day. That's trip. it, yeah. I remember seeing some photos after. I was too exhausted. I just had nothing left. Yeah, in. I think most of you stayed around. Well, I think with me. Although I have a feeling you you paid for our ferries because you did. had a credit card and we didn't. You yeah, refused to take well, the money I, back. So. I think what happened was that I felt a bit bad because at that point filming had concluded and like neither of you, you both missed out on the money and I knew I had money sort of coming anyway. And after what happened with you, I just felt, oh, I've got, got to do something. So, yeah, I just, yeah. Very uh, uh, yeah, no, no, it's, it's fine. I had to. I remember in my first show, I bought a round of drinks for everyone, and uh, I accidentally left. I didn't mean to. Uh, it was like sixty dollars, what, or, or sixty pesos, whatever it was. I gave him a hundred dollar bill, and I was I had a few drinks. I didn't realize I left the change at the bar, so I accidentally left like a forty dollar tip for the bartender. So. I bet you, I bet they loved you. I know. Yeah. The thing is, it took a month for the money to turn up as well. I had to wait quite a while for that, so I was pretty yeah. broke for a while because oh. because the thing is i did two shows back to back so i came i got flown home for just five days and then flew straight back out so i was half asleep uh, that's why I, I didn't go with you and dan to uruguay because i was just i was hanging at that point mm. so yeah. yeah yeah um let's see what's this question goes out to both of you yeah we've done that oh question eight what did you guys find hard about the season two wipeout zone and from what uh, and from what Claire saw of the season five wipeout zone, uh, what does she feel she would have been able to do? Uh, would she, would she been? Do you think you would have done well in it? Yeah, your take of the series five wipeout zone versus what we had in two. Yeah, I, I feel really sentimental. I think about series two. I think yeah. series two was the best series, and I had a great time on series five as yeah. well but series two i just watch it and i just feel that that was such a good series i, I feel yeah. like they tried to make things better but in yeah. doing so 
think they took away some of the classic things. I, I, know, I yeah. think the wipeout zone in in R one was all tough, but all kind of doable, apart from the brusher, which felt like yeah. I don't know if anyone did that. Uh, Jack, um, Jack could clear it. He was. Oh, good. did he? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Jack, Jack and Kelly could um, do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, the rest of us yeah, all the... fell off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. It's just. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the series five one, it just all felt a bit slower and a, le- a bit less showy. It had like nice. the ramp that went up, and then if you didn't activate the tidal wave thing, yeah. because you didn't, if, if, yeah. if you got up quick enough on that app, yeah, there was no tidal wave. So then that was kind of a bit of a non-event of right. an obstacle. Yeah. Then then there was the thing where you kind of ran along, and there was the sweeper arms going yeah. around, which I think would have been good had everyone not like lay down underneath it yeah <laughs> it oh because they just made it ducking, all a bit couldn't it? Yeah. Slow. yeah yeah so it just made it all a bit slow and just it just, it just didn't feel yeah. as much of a show i didn't yeah. think as, as the other one i, I felt like um, oh wipeout was almost the classic one no i mean that's yeah being a bit biased maybe but yeah. well that's what i think as well and uh but but yeah i i I do think I'm oh, heavily well, biased towards. Well, in that case, I, I would say two. it's unanimous two nil that the, the series <laughs> two. So for anyone watching, yeah, series two. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we got to keep moving through these questions. I knew this was going to take up you know a lot of time going through this. So okay, so question eight. Um, question nine. Uh, what is Claire doing now after her shows have concluded? Okay, that's a point. Uh, what What did you do for a living back then? Is it the same job that you're doing now or? Same job, but a little bit higher up the ladder. But the same right. job. I'm I'm yeah. a I'm a civil engineer, and right. I, I work on, on flood defences, um, right. so sort of design and management of, of flood defences in in this country. Um, it's not that exciting to talk about, really. Um, in terms of sports stuff, I I continue to play football. Um, I'm not playing at the moment because I've had a, a knee injury. I had to have right. an operation in November, but yeah. hopefully I'll be back next season. Um, yeah. and yeah, I I mean. I'll do any obstacle course that you throw at me, but not one of these like marathon running ones that yeah. crazy people like Chris do, and probably you as well, DJ. Oh, do you mean those obstacle course events? You mean? The, the, yeah, the- I, I mean, I, I, I have done, I have done a couple of those, but I, I'm no sort of ultra runner. Yeah, you know? do you know what? My mate Andy is obsessed with them. He at one point he used to do like fifteen a year. He dragged me along to one last year, and uh, for me, I'm not in shape for doing obstacles when you get... Well, I, it, it was muddy, and I, I'm still traumatised from the mud from what we had in Argentina, so I just... It's not... I prefer shorter ones, like the Ninja Warrior ones. If they're like a sprint course, 30, 60 second ones, I can handle that. I don't want to do these ones that are like 15 kilometres with obstacles. Um, yeah, I've, I've got a four-year-old now as well, so I'm, I'm starting to get do more of the sort of, you know, uh, trampoline parks. And oh, that. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that sort of thing with her now. So, oh god, the Ninja Warrior parks are amazing. Uh, for that, yeah. there's a lot of kids that are going along to that. So, um, because it's, I'm trying to remember, is it a boy, boy or a girl? You got a girl, a girl, yeah, a girl, yeah, yeah. I'll, she'll love it, <laughs> she really will. Yeah. So, uh, right, okay. Uh, how question 10 How many contestants has Claire been able to keep in touch with from season two and five that she still talks to? Um, I still, I met up with Dan a lot straight afterwards yeah. um and for a few years afterwards um but we didn't live that close together and we and we just kind of life drifted us apart a little bit exactly, yeah. um so i haven't actually physically seen him for a while um mm. but and similarly with i met up with quite a few other people yeah. initially and still in contact via facebook and it's, it's, it's the sort of thing helps. that if if anybody from any of my episodes said I'm in the area, do you want to meet up? I'd be right there because it's it, it just brings you together. It, it was just such a shared experience that it doesn't matter. It was 15 years ago. You can still yeah. chat. Well, we're having a nice chat now with the well, help exactly. of some other people's questions, but <laughs> exactly. But even so, it's almost like we're just carrying on from where we left off when we last saw each other. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same yeah. thing. So, so yeah. So I don't I don't see people many people face to face anymore really, but. Um, right. But yeah, still kind of am aware of what everyone's doing and the occasional kind of Facebook conversation and things. Right. So it's, it's all right. I was just trying to uh, scroll to the next question. I accidentally uh, knocked the screen out. So I, I've got it back now. Uh, we're going to have to go quick on these. These. This is from uh, Edwin Anthony. Um, I think you. I think he's mucking around a bit on the, the first one. Do you remember the the joke in 
in series five what have you done in training he's like oh i've learned to stand up it's oh, what yeah. made you practice uh what made you practice standing up uh because you mentioned it in last chance saloon uh, in fact where did yeah. the idea come from uh for saying that in the interview what i think i can't remember if it was my idea or theirs obviously the whole point of the reason i was back for the for the series five was because yeah. i didn't stand up at the end of dizzy yeah. dummies in uh, yeah. and I definitely could have done if I'd known that was the rule. So that was yeah. just a little joke of, yeah. you know, I can, I can stand. And then that was the running theme throughout the entire of that program. Then, yeah, they kept going on with that. Standing yeah. up again. And oh, look, hasn't she stood up again? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Saying I'm still standing and stuff. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they played that song, didn't they? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, question two from Edwin. What happened during the photo finish? In the third round of Terraga round, I think we've covered that already, haven't we've we? Done that one, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's fine. Question three: Which course from series two and series five did you prefer during your time? Uh, yeah, between series two and five, your favourite? I think we've covered that. The the sweeper is my yeah, and ultimate I think favourite. And um, you've even said and the, the wipeout, wipeout zone from the yeah. from the second one. It just I think felt like the classic one. Yeah. 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 Again, I'm biased as well, obviously, on that. Uh, let's see. Qu uh, question four. Which was your favourite round during your time on Wipeout? Yeah, go on. Your favourite favorite event, favourite round. Hmm. Sweeper. No yeah. question. Exactly. Okay. I know. We just had such a laugh up there as well. That was amazing. Uh, of course, there was no margin for error on that either as well. Other games, you could fall off, like Terra uh, Terra go round, not Terra go round, uh, Double Cross. You could afford to fall yeah. off. Or and off and go and get back in again. There was no yeah. recovery on on sweeper. No, no. And that was yeah. I just remember that time when I got, felt like I got spun around. I felt like I was in a Final Destination film, and I just look up, see everyone falling like skittles, and I look up and just see you standing tall. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's the boss on this one, right? Um, question five: If you had the chance to go on any of the obstacles, uh, on Wipeout, what which would it be? I'm guessing he means favourite obstacle, which I think we know. Yeah, <laughs> predictably the sweeper. Yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. Although I, I would, I would like to have a go at the series five wipeout zone, just because I was yeah, there and I just, never got to have a go actually, at it. And yeah, I guess dreadmill as well, just to try it because I yeah. never did. I suppose yeah. So you could compare. I'm not dreadmill. Keep getting those confused. Uh, oh yeah, dreadmill, dreadmill. Dreadmill, the one that I did with the. the yeah, yeah. I get yeah. Terra go round and dreadmill confused yeah. in my head in the names. No, no, it's fine. Uh, how was your ex? I think how was your experience during your time in series two and five? Well, I think we've covered that already, haven't we? Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. As I say, series two being my first time out there made it so special, and series five was brilliant and so much fun. But I have yeah. such stronger memories from series two than yeah. I do from series five actually something he's mentioned here let me read this out it says by the way on the broadcast of series five episode five you were the first un yeah in the edit you were the first to run and the only unbeatable contestants in the qualifiers um your spot on first place wasn't moved oh that, okay i think what he means was um the order in which you run you know when they call you out one by one to run the course in the edit, you were the first contestants we saw in the broadcast. Were you the first one to run the course that day? I don't remember, to be yeah. honest. I I think I might have been, but okay. they don't they don't show it in the order. As no, you know. they don't. don't show it in the order that you that you do it necessarily. Yeah, they show um, it. So I, I honestly can't remember if I was yeah. the first or not. But so yeah, okay, that's fine. Right, that's basically covered his question. It's amazing. I knew this was going to take a while to get through. <laughs> Right, Super Ninja Jake 2. I know he's, and as Edwin Anthony, they've asked questions before for previous one. Let me just check. Yeah, I've got this right. If you had to do a sweeper showdown between you, uh, between everyone in all your episodes you're in, do you reckon you would win it? Uh, if not, who do you reckon would be the last man or woman standing? <laughs> well, I think we've kind of... I, I, there, there is a lot of luck in the sweeper as well. I yeah. mean once in that champ show once we got up to the level that we were at mm. we were all kind of doing the same thing weren't we I, yeah. and obviously then there was the pile up which yeah. contributed to you falling down if you get taken out by the person in front of you there's yeah. nothing you can do about it so I, I, but... actually yeah what okay from because i was on podium seven you were two behind me on nine i think because adam had fallen off mm. i remember when i first saw it happen because it actually looked like 
initially I thought, well, technically Aaron started, but I noticed Dan, well, I checked in future runs. Dan, his feet got clipped and Dan actually fell down. I had to pick himself up, but then Aaron forgot to jump and then it all started. Yeah. I just remember by the time it hit Ricky, it just looked like the bar came to a standstill and then bouncing around. Yeah, and then it was bouncing up and down. And, and that, uh, even it, when it came to me, luckily I had that pod, that spare podium yeah, in front spare of me thing, that yeah. fallen off before that I could watch it coming because it was yeah. coming like this. And, <laughs> and it, you had to kind of get over it like, whoa, this is, because yeah. obviously it was flying around and yeah. it had really been hit so hard. It was it slowed down a bit, and but it was bouncing up and down. Yeah to get over it and then so i got over it then i think there was another spare one behind me and then jack was behind then, me and it was still going up and down and it got him wow, okay um, yeah. it and then yeah it went foot, he went in and then james chris and dan they just all went down like skittles yeah. i remember i hit the water and when i looked up i just saw the three of them all just get mowed down and then i yeah. sort of looked around and then i see oh you're up there <laughs> you won yeah yeah, I just didn't know what I was just, yeah. just like, well, how did that suddenly just happen? Yeah, and how am I still so up there? We went from nine to one in just yeah. one spin. And yeah, like I've said to other people that that bar, they were already at the maximum height. They couldn't go any higher. So they just turned the speed up. And yeah, yeah. even when Katie was in, if you notice on one where she got knocked down and then picked herself back up before it came round, that was doing a sweep in five seconds. And I think toward the end, it was it was between four and five seconds. We were having to jump consistently yeah. and uh, yeah. i just remember when it came to me and the pilot was happening i was so used to when gary jumps i jump as well and the bar sweeps I through that's the thing yeah and what happened i started to jump and realized no i've jumped too soon and when i went to then re-jump the bar was there and i was like oh no yeah that was it because it had slowed down so much you had to adjust from where because you got in that rhythm didn't you it was the rhythm yeah. and i forgot i, I I suppose you're reacting to things, uh, you know, in the moment. And it was just, uh, I just made the wrong call. And yeah. But we'd been up there ages, hadn't we? It had been going on for such, because they edited it down. They really cut it down. Well, but uh, Do you know what? I asked Andy Norgay afterward, what was the total running time? He said it wasn't the longest game. Uh, three minutes 40 was the total time, but it was just, we were it all. Yeah. It felt like a lot longer than that. Yeah, it but, felt um... Yeah. Because me and Dan were up there for ages the first time round as well. And right. We were having a we were having a really nice time up there. And I think in the edit, Dan like pointed at me and went, "Yeah," and they went, yeah. "Oh, Dan's getting cocky." He absolutely right. wasn't at all. He was saying, yeah. "Oh, this is amazing. We're having a great yeah. time. We're doing really well." Right. Um, so, but yeah, we were up there just the two of us for ages jumping on that. And I, um, well, I know in in my first show when we had the sacks, um, that definitely lasted. I think that lasted about five minutes or more because. After a few people went down early, and at one point I was one of. By the time I was had the guts to look around to see what was going on, there was only about four of us left, and we were all chatting amongst ourselves because there was time to react. And it was only when they thought, right, let's finish the game up, they started to speed it up. There was <laughs> I was in third place, and I was just in shock. I thought, oh, I've actually made the next round. I didn't care at that point. I should have gone yeah. for trying. Oh, yeah, I forgot you had to do it in sacks. That was a that was a bad idea. I think. But that do was you know true. what? The other thing with sacks is that there was no um, uh, there was no grip. So while we're stood up there with oh, the sack, yeah. I put one foot in and I just checked to see what the traction was like. And I said, uh, guys, I said, there is no grip on this whatsoever. And Alex, who was behind me, he was just like, oh, my goodness. And then everyone else just started looking and they were like, we had to make sure we landed dead center. Because if you're on the edge, you're just going to slide straight off. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. that that was tough. Oh, yeah. um, I'm glad I didn't have to do it in a sack. Do you know what? That's why I enjoyed the Champ Show one because that felt like a proper sweeper. You could really go for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that was just a way of making people not jump as high and the, not look as spectacular. Exactly. Yeah, it did. It, it did. Weird decision it, that one. Ricky had the sacks as well in his episode. Um. So yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, sorry, we've got to keep moving with this. We're really yeah, we'll run out of time, aren't we? I know. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's Sweeper Showdown. Yeah. Um. Yeah, who would you? Uh, well, I mean, I would say arguably you, you're the best at sweeper. Who else would you rate sort of up there with sweeper? I mean, well, I'd say me and Dan were up there for ages. I was thinking the first time Dan around, was and good, obviously yeah. on the champions show, technically yeah. he came second, although he got knocked out. Yeah. By, like Chris took him out, otherwise yeah. it would have been the two of us again. But Absolutely. it's so hard to judge from that sweeper it, show it because really, yeah. I mean that champions show because it yeah. it was all just came from that. Yeah. But like I did, I did quite well to adjust to the bounce of the bar, mm, but yeah. I was lucky because I had that spare platform yeah, in front of me to yeah, watch it yeah. coming. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I, I think I think we were probably all on the same sort of it's level. Really, the ones of us who I, I suppose at that point we were all level. clearing the bar at maximum height anyway, weren't we? So it's maximum then, yes. height and probably yeah. close to maximum speed as well. Just, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I don't yeah. think they could have gone much faster. So uh, yeah, 
Right. Uh, let's see. We've now got is this Sam Hemingway? Yeah, Sam Hemingway. Again, he's done questions before. If you remember how long roughly the sweeper lasted in both your original, well, in Championship, I remember Andy Norgett saying three minutes forty. Do you know how long your original one lasted for? You said it was longer. I don't know. I think it was. I think it was sim. I'd say it was similar. It yeah. it felt like me and Dan were up there for it, but it felt like it was going faster in the in the champions show. Oh, yeah. I think. Yeah. Although I don't know, it was going pretty fast for me and Dan. I I don't know. Similar, I would say. Yeah. Um, but it, it felt like a long time. And I know. I think it in was a good way. About the because I, I remember I did ask uh, Andy Norgate at the end how high what height is the bar. And he basically, I mean, he's the same height as me. He said, uh, basically, belly button height. I checked; it's about a meter ten. Uh, that was the uh, the height. And yeah, it's and and you're on a and I said to someone else, it's a spongy surface, so it's not like on concrete trying to clear that height. You've you're losing some of your bounce from from yeah, top. Yeah. So yeah. okay. Also, how did it feel when it suddenly went from nine to one of you in the final sweeper? Yeah, because <laughs> that's yeah. I think when so when after the. You got knocked off, yeah. Because I say you were two in front of me, weren't you? And then there was right, the spare yeah. platform it was me. Yeah. At that point, I'd hadn't calculated in my head that I was definitely through. I think oh, I'd seen yeah. all this carnage in front of me, and it was like, yeah. oh, I don't know, yeah, if I'm through or not. Yeah, I was just concentrating on getting over this bouncing yeah. bar, and then I was like, yes, I'm over it. And then I started to look around, and I was like, okay, I'm through. And then I was like, oh well, hang on, <laughs> definitely through because everyone's gone now. <laughs> and so I was just, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of it was. It was it was kind of relief because it just felt like we were all just doing it and it's yeah. just going to go on until we yeah. got to exhaustion levels. Well, I, um, I remember the day before I was chatting to to Ricky after we'd moved hotels and me and him were trying to sort of work out. Well, I think a few of us trying to work out how it was going to go. Mm -hmm. And I think it was Ricky said, I've just got a feeling it's going to be a pilot that's going to decide it. And well, yeah, I mean, I didn't think it was going to be a, a nine person pile up. I, I hadn't predicted that one, but uh, <laughs> fun to be a part of, that's for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, finally, were there any differences in how in how the show in series five compared to series two? Yeah. Did you notice any noticeable differences between series two and five? general structure was it qualifier on one day, the rest of the events on day two? Was that the same? Yeah. So it was the first half day you did like filming of your oh um, yeah your spinning in, table in, and your oh, interviews with Amanda and stuff and then it, yeah. yeah it was it was exactly the same half yeah. right. half day of the qualifier and then the next day was everything else wasn't it right yeah it was, that's um, it so yeah yeah I, I, the, the obstacles were different but the way it ran was was pretty the same right okay uh now we get into uh what's this uh foxy five four two and goes which of your times on the show did you find the course was the hardest uh and then it says some of those series five obstacles look a lot more look a lot more precise than the ones from earlier seasons okay so your take which did you feel was more difficult then series two or five uh, well the mud was thicker in series two which right. made it mm. if you fell in the mud more draining i think yeah that the yeah, I mean, I fell off all of them on all of them in the qualifier. I I, I fell off them all, but I fell off them all quickly. Right. Um, so I I don't I don't know that any. I already said that that weird yeah. uh, zip wire that didn't work. That's right. Yeah, it didn't at the end of have enough. Yeah. That um that felt like I fell off that because of it rather than because of my abilities. <laughs> Whereas yeah. the others all just felt like I hadn't balanced properly. I was pretty rubbish at the sucker punch as well. I yeah. I just uh yeah. What? So um I don't know about you. Do you find on, on sucker punch, because although you got the hand grips there, you've also where the glove comes out from the wall, you that wooden sort of you know, the the whole sort of cut out, you know, where the punching arm comes out i was tempted to hold on to that because that felt like a more sturdy grip than the grips but i was worried in case that was in the rules or not or if my hand was going to get trapped with yeah. the hydraulic arm did you ever try that yeah. at all grabbing that or I, th I think i fell off quite quickly on all of them to i don't think i did um i yeah I, I thought i would be better at that than i was but i yeah. just i don't know it just pushed yeah. me and i was gone yeah i i know with with me it's yeah because both of my sucker punches got edited out, but I remember watching from series one and I had a feeling there was gaps in the wall. So I was trying to tuck into a gap, wait for the bars to go in. And 
go like that but on the second one i just because i was covered in mud i was used to holding onto the grips without mud from my first go the second one i found there was no grip so my hands are covered in mud and i'm trying to hang on to the grips and the next thing i know I'm backwards in the mud and it yeah was... the champ the champ show it got me right in the face yeah. and you just see it push me in the face and then my oh, hands right. kind of really like... for yeah. nothing in the air yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, I, honestly, when I was in the mud, I didn't know where I was. It was just, that was traumatic, <laughs> which is why I said to my mate, I do not want to do muddy obstacle courses ever again. <laughs> I just, that was enough. So I think that's almost all the questions. Uh, Josh uh, Morrison, he's, he's, he said the other, uh, what's this? Did you know, yeah, he's asking, did you know you're the only competitor to win the sweeper twice? Um, were you aware of that? I'm. Well, I, I guess it makes sense because I've not many people did it twice, and that's um, true. and then Actually, there was yeah, because it, if, got if rid the of it for the later series, didn't they? That's true. Um, yes, yeah, we only had it in series one and two, and they were talking of a champ show for series one. Uh, I, found, I, I spoke to Ben about this, and he said in the uh, letters they were considering a, a champ show, but they never went ahead with it. Of course, so technically we were the first people. Well, we're the only people to ever play it twice, weren't we? And, yeah. Yeah. You won. You won both. So, well, I guess that that answers that then. So, you were literally the only person to uh, yeah. Yeah, to, to do it twice. Well, do you know what? I can't believe I could. I, I don't know what our total running time is. I <laughs> I would say we've been going well over an hour on this. I mean, I thought I did. I said to you at the start, probably about forty to sixty minutes, maybe yeah. questions. But I I think we're up to about ninety minutes now. It must be fairly close. Oh, John's. <laughs> talk too much <laughs> uh, honestly it's just been so good uh catch up i mean i let me just double check yeah we did it's taken all this time just because we've effectively just covered all the questions you know from everyone so uh i hope uh, i hope everyone's sort of happy with what we've, we've covered i think i don't think there's any more possible questions from that is there i think most things have been covered it feels like we've chatted it all through now yeah i think no. so yeah but uh oh god i mean yeah, I just want to say to to everyone that put the questions in, thanks ever so much, because this has been a different interview. I mean, literally, we've just based it around what everyone else was asking. So, uh, I mean, it, it's, I don't know about you, but it's nice to know that people still, you know, hold. Oh, it's so up. nice to know that people are interested and people have been so kind about it as well. As I say, I was, I was so worried when I came off crying off that thing that people were going, oh, she's such a sore loser. And she's so right. But, but, you know, people have, everyone's been kind about it. And all the questions were very very positive yeah, <laughs> so exactly, that's that, yeah that's nice it, it's been nice that people can makes it worthwhile doesn't it well I, do you know i can tell you now i mean when the, those of us when we watched dizzy dummies you know when we were out there we were just sort of like we felt so bad for it we were genuinely uh gutted that was why when i remember when dan shouted that thing that was for you claire that was for you <laughs> at that point we were sort of like <laughs> oh god that didn't help me recover either who's like... chopping onions at the moment yeah <laughs> it's like I know it's quite quite an emotional time. So yeah, no, it's that. Uh, oh, I've got so many special memories from that, and uh, yeah, well, I mean, the fact we're still talking about it to this day, you know, well, it, it's suddenly there's been a bit of a revival lately with all this, uh, you know, all this now. But uh, yeah, look, I just I, I can't thank you enough. I know that you're on a lunch break at the moment. You've got to get back to work very very shortly. So uh, we've definitely made the most of the time slot that we had available. I think. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's it. Yeah, the fun no, part. Thank you. Well, thank you for the opportunity. It's been really nice to think oh, about it again after all this time. I know. I know. Yeah, and... we'll have to have another catch up. Uh, you know, without me hitting record and all that sort of stuff, and just have a proper little, uh, uh, proper little catch up. But um, yeah, the fun part is, is that right? The full version of this will go to YouTube, right? And I'll probably put it on Rumble as well. But Instagram, I do a version on that, but I can only do videos at 15 minutes. I've got to somehow try and cut this down to a 15 minute edit. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but uh, we, we will see. So uh, it might take a, might take a week or so to, to get editing with all this because, um, yeah, basically, as we're talking about each of the events, I'll try and overlay clips of you doing like tearing around sweeper. We'll I'll try and add all that in afterwards. So hopefully if you're for, for anyone watching this, uh, yes, you will have seen a lot of clips, you know, as we're going through. So, uh, yeah, that, that's the plan. But, uh, yeah, same as you. You've got to go back to work. I've got to go out to work as well now because we're recording. If anyone's wondering, we're recording this on a Friday lunchtime. So, uh, yeah. So have you got much work to do for the rest of the day now or just? 
Yeah, I think so. Sadly. <laughs> I know. But, yeah, um... I'm, I'm the same. Yeah, I, I got. I'm still cleaning windows after all these years. I got to. Luckily, I'm only working just up the road, about a mile away from here. So, uh, yeah, I got to get my car loaded up and uh, yeah, doing manual labour. So it should be fun. So I will get editing this as soon as I can, and uh, once it's ready to go, I'll I'll send you a link anyway, so you can. Um, you can see it as well but honestly clear thanks so much for doing this and i do, do you know what your name has popped up a few times and it's like i've been wanting to ask you for a while but i've been trying to space out the interviews because if you cram everything together it can be a bit sort of overload so it's better to space them out but i i sort of had a feeling there was going to be quite a response because your name had popped up a few times over the last couple of years anyway so um that was why when you said you could do it i thought right you've said yes let's put the questions out there and my goodness me well you can see the response so uh yes. it's, it's nice cool. to know that you're you're thought of in very high regard and and for good reason so uh yeah Th no thank you thanks, thank you so much for doing this all right okay all right. Uh, so everyone watching uh thanks i hope we covered all the questions and uh i will try and work out another wipe out one at some point but i don't know how long it'll take so uh to everyone watching uh yeah see ya